this is the teaching of two great teacher. What I did is sometimes I received directly from the Lord. Sometimes he, 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 he asked me to preach, um, teach on that, but I want you to read from these people and bring it to the understanding of your group. So I will first kind of silent the person who is pouring the water, Malice. Thank you. Amen. Then I go to, uh, so is two teacher I mixed, two great teacher. One is called John Beaver. I think you know him. He's the one who wrote the Bet of Satan. Yes. And the other one is Joshua Selman. So first, if you don't know John Beaver, please, you have to have the Bet of Satan. Please, if you are in ministry and you want your ministry to blossom and you want to go to the highest one, take already the bet of Satan. Because one thing the enemy is using against minister is offense. You will never understand and uh, get over offense better than when you read this book of John Beaver, The Bet of Satan. Please take the time to read. Someone else is doing noise. So I have to Please, Ma, can you write it in the chat? Sure. Thank you. Uh, the Bet of Satan is helpful. It's more I than write it. helpful. Reverend Denise can tell you about that. If you can do that book all the way to the end, trust me, before someone else offends you, you will understand that this is completely a weapon to destroy your anointing. Okay. So, uh, brother, if we send it. So, let's start with this. Can you read, uh, Ruti? Amen. Second John chapter 8. Watch out that you do not lose what we have worked so hard to achieve. Be diligent so that you receive your full reward. Amen. Uh -huh. So watch out. His first start with watch out. Who's talking? John. You know, John lived a long time. He was one of the oldest uh, apostles. Watch out that you do not lose what we have worked so hard to achieve. A lot of people get into, I am a Christian. I am this. After a certain time, they don't know. You can lose your salvation. Mm -hmm. You can lose by your behavior. Yes, you can lose your salvation. So you have to watch out that you don't lose what we have worked so hard to achieve. Then he say, be diligent so that you receive your full reward full reward so can you lose a blessing that god gave you yes you can if you are not careful people never wonder why paul was trembling with his salvation because you can lose it although paul was a great evangelist a great revivalist a miracle worker everywhere was going Miracles were happening, but he trembled with his salvation. You have people now when they have a church of 1,000 or 2,000 and everything, they don't care about the rest anymore because they think I made it. I'm a great man of God, but you have to watch out. You can lose your reward. Be, be diligent so that you can receive, you will receive your full reward. Now you need to understand that if the Bible say there's a full reward, that means it can be a partial reward. That means it can be a no reward. You can be walking, 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 and then you have no reward or a partial reward. So let's learn from all of this. And then we enter into what is oh no. Mark 6, 4 to 6. Can you read this? Amen. The chat popped up on my screen. <laughs> but Jesus said to them, 
A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid hands he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them, and he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. Amen. Amen. Just put yourself in that time. Jesus, God, made flesh. He's telling that a prophet without honor, except in his own country, among his own relative, in his own house. Then what the sentence is telling you next, he could not do mighty works. Why he could not do mighty works? Because they did not honor him in that place. Honor with lack of honor, we remove the flow of the anointing to you. Jesus, with all the power he carried, except he lay his hand on few sick people and healed them. The rest of the people he could not do ministry. Lack of honor. He marveled because of their unbelief. Just think, why do we believe? When there's not honor, instead of looking at the person, you are thinking, hey, is it not the son of this carpenter? Mm. I remember he fixed my bed. I remember he built that table. That table is even crooked. Now nah, I don't think he fixed it very well. Now he want to heal people. Lack of honor. Familiarity will kill the flow of the anointing. When someone takes you for granted and look at you like common, it kills the anointing. The anointing cannot flow toward you. You are used with the person. You become even disrespectful with the person. The lack of honor destroy your reward. The Bible say, be diligent not to lose what we have worked so hard to achieve. Mm -hmm. This was a partial re result because he went there to do miracles. He went there to do so many things, but because they look at him like, He's just Jesus. You don't remember Jesus, the son of Joseph. You, you don't remember Jesus. He was running here. You, you don't remember him. That is the way they lost that. Because he couldn't do miracle day. Is it happening? I will get to that. It happened to many things. I remember, I think two years ago, the Lord told me, tell your people to stop to call you Mama Paulette. Mm -hmm. Everybody was calling me mama, 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 even the oldest and me, mama. He said, tell them to stop. And I asked him why. He said, because they are breaking the flow of the anointing. They cannot receive from you if they become too familiar. Amen. And I asked everybody to stop and call me reverend. Because he said, reverend is a title I'm giving you. And there's an anointing deposit on the name. When they revert the name, when they honor the name, the anointing flow to them. And I understood it even with my, 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 the, my spiritual father, the one who ordained me is Reverend Babalola. If I go low on expectation, I receive low. Mm -hmm. If I go high on expectation, I receive high. I think I can even close the lesson here, but let me continue just for the sake of it. So a partial result is when you have produced a lot of effort, but at the end you have lacked discernment mm -hmm. in honoring the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at what is no reward at all. No reward at all. Ruthie, can you read 1 Kings 12, 4? Now it's not from... Uh, 4 to 18 directly. So uh, I skip some verse. So when you read and you arrive, I will tell you where. But start with 1 Kings 12, 4. Start reading all, start reading. 
Amen. Mm -hmm. Your father made your yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the burdensome service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us and we will serve you. Okay, let me tell you what was happening. Rehoboam was a king who after his father died, he took the power. So his cons, uh, the, the people of Israel came and they, they are telling him, your father made our yoke heavy. Please lighten our burden or yoke, please, is what they say. And what he tell them is, give me three days, then I will get back to you. And he went to the elders, and this is what the elders is telling them. Can you read seven now? Amen. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just give me a sec, my screen. Okay. It's cut off the verse. Oh, okay. You want to open it in your ah, Bible? There we go. Okay, great. And, and they spoke to him saying, if you will be a servant to these people today and serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. Amen. Amen. So the elders who have been there from the beginning say, if you serve them, you are the king. But if you accept to serve them, answer to them, speak good word to them, they will be servant forever to you. You understand? By serving someone, he become your servant also. Am I teaching? Amen. Let's go to it. What happened? But he rejected the advice which the elders had given him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. Continue then. Then the young men who had grown up with him spoke to him saying, Thus, you should speak to this people who have spoken to you, saying, Your father made your yoke heavy, but you make it lighter on us. Thus, you shall say to them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's waist. And now, whereas my father put a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. Oh, my God. Amen. You see, you see foolishness. Yes. What happened to him? Continue below. Verse 18. Then King Rehoboam. No, start at, at 17. Actually, it's half of 16. Go ahead. So Israel departed. So Israel departed to their tents. But Rehoboam reigned over the children of Israel who dwelt in the cities of Judah. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was in charge of the revenue, but all Israel stoned him with stones, and he died. Uh -huh. Therefore, King Rehoboam mounted his chariot in haste to flee to Jerusalem. Look at that. Wow. He was simple. They told him, serve them, help them. They will help you. But he said, my finger, my little finger. I don't know if you see. <laughs> and that is pride mm -hmm. and pride is the one making you lose your reward most of the time my little finger should be thicker than my father waist that means my father gave you small in africa my father gave me small i will give you pepper mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. and he end up losing the whole thing mm -hmm. you can have no reward or partial reward, or full reward, mm -hmm. if you learn how to own up. Mm -hmm. Amen. So let's go further and learn. Okay. What is honor? Honor is appreciation. Honor is esteem. Honor is favorable rigor, respect. Mm -hmm. Honor is giving value to a relationship. What is dishonor? Because sometimes you learn more when you learn the contrary of the word. Dishonor is to look like common, ordinary, but dishonor also is to treat shamefully, even humiliate hmm. someone. That is dishonor. Honor can be placed in action 
in word and in thought. But all true owner, uh, when I say true, actually it's, a, it's a wrong, it's true, T-R-U-E, originate from the heart, is coming from your heart. When you honor someone, it's coming from your heart. Mm -hmm. It's why the Lord said in Isaiah 29, 13, Go ahead. Uh, can you read it for me, Ruti? Inasmuch as these people drew near to, with their mouths and honor me with their lips, mm -hmm. but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men. Amen. So Amen. he's telling them, you, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far. So the law is showing that, no. I don't accept just things from the mouth. It has to come from your heart. Amen. And the fear, the fear, the reverence, honor comes from the heart and is a deep reverence to the person. And it's very important. We see why, because you will see that most of the blessing are wasted because the person don't know how to honor. First Samuel 2.30, can you go there? Therefore, the Lord God of Israel says, I said, indeed, that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. Mm -hmm. But now the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Amen. You honor me, I will honor you. Most of the time is like a seed. Amen. Whatever you sow is what you are reaping. Amen. People forget that spiritual law apply everywhere. Honor is an essential key to receiving from heaven. Amen. It's very important. Those who honor God will be honored. Can you go to your Bible if you have another Bible? Or oh, I don't, I know you are using your phone, but can you go to Mark 14, 4 to 5? Ruthie or someone else. If you have difficulty, I can ask someone else to read. But can you read in your Bible? It has to be amplified. Because I will show you two people standing in front of Jesus, but with the, uh, the behavior are completely opposite. Amen. Uh -huh. Mark 14, 45, Amplified uh -huh. Version. But there were some who were indignantly remarking to one another, mm -hmm. why has this perfume been wasted? For this perfume might have been sold for more than 300 denarii, a labor's wages for almost a year, and the money given to the poor, and they scolded her. Amen. Amen. Look at that. This woman came. She was perhaps a low life or whatever they say, but she decided that I will honor the law today. I will come to him. I will give him my most precious treasure. And she poured the whole thing on his feet and start washing his feet. The first thing that come in the mind of the order, why are we wasting something so valuable? So if you take it by the back, that means that Jesus does not have the same value than the perfume. perfume. It's why we can use the perfume to do something else. Mm. You understand? Because they are talking about waste. Yes. The woman is there. These are the one that, if you come from outside, from the world side, you say, okay, these are the Pharisees or these are the teacher in the, uh, of the Bible. They are honorable. They are the people. But look at the behavior in front of God. The one who does not know anything, the one who feel like I am the sinner here, she come and she gave her best. Those one who are sitting, perhaps they didn't have Bible, they have scroll and everything, but they are the one saying that, why are we wasting so much value on this, on the Lord? Go to Mark 14, six to nine. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why are you bothering her and causing trouble? She has done a good and beautiful thing to me. For you always will, for you always have the poor with you, 
and whenever you wish you can do something good to them but you will not always have me she has done what she could she has anointed my body beforehand for the burial i assure you and most solemnly say to you wherever the good news regarding salvation is proclaimed throughout the world what she has done will be told in memory of her amen amen so you see that she has honored the lord she has honored the lord and because she has honored the lord he even prophesied to her directly and you know because it's jesus who prophesied you know as if he was a, a, a right prophecy or a wrong prophecy or whatever <laughs> she received are we not reading the story up to now two thousand years after amen you have to understand the impact of honor. She came, she touched him, and something was released to her that changed her life forever. Those who were there who knew that this is the Lord, but in their heart, they did not give any value to him because why they will waste a perfume like that on him? Two different minds. And you see that they have those words in the top. Nobody spoke. This is why they say honor can be placed in action. Honor can be placed in your word. But honor can be placed also in your thought. You can say nothing. But the way you think if it's wrong, it can remove your, your reward. Amen. Amen. It's very important to learn because we are Christian and sometimes we don't understand why things don't work a certain way. It's because we don't know that the way we are behaving can be blocking or blessing. How do I get, how do I give honor? This one is Joshua Selman. You know Joshua Selman can teach. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. You have to follow him because he go up and down and up and down too. Amen. Amen. The first thing you need to have when you need to honor someone, and I will give different examples of things that happen in the ministry that uh, I follow people in ministry. I look at them. I look at the way they're behaving. They are behaving. First thing is discernment. You cannot communicate honor without discernment. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Jacob. You remember Jacob was sleeping on the stone. Then he saw angel coming up and down, angel coming up and down. Mm. And he woke up and what he say, he say, then Jacob awoke from his sleep and say, surely the law is in this place. And I wasn't aware of it. Mm. What is it? Awareness, sensitivity. Mm. A lot of Christian, Christian miss it sensitivity the law can tell you oh not this person then you think at the story of the person you say mm, they even told me he did this he did this he did that why will i honor you you disregard it. you just miss something jacob slept he saw the angel then he realized he did not discern he did not discern when he came to sleep, he did not discern this has the presence of God. Sometimes we miss that. You enter and you start judging people. You enter a place, you start judging people. You judge their clothes, you judge things, and you miss the presence of God. A lot of people don't know. You have to be aware. You have to know where is God. You have to know how God moves. You have to be aware. Discernment is the key. You can be in the place of, of blessing, but you are totally ignorant and you dishonor the place. Jacob regretted not discerning, discerning it earlier. So when he has a chance later, and I, I don't know, to meet another angel. Remember when Jacob, I think he was in Genesis 33, to meet another angel. He hold and he say, I will not leave you until you bless me. 
I will not leave you. He's because he knew now before mm. he was sleeping. It's, hey. You understand? You need discernment. Discernment is very important in Ono. Men carry spiritual possibilities. I'm not talking only about man of God because honor has to be everywhere. It's written everywhere. You have a way of honoring. You have to honor your spouse. Uh, I will get to that one. It's why I put honor reward. <laughs> you have honor to honor. You have to honor the person leading you for sure. You have to honor your boss, the one who pay you. You have, there's different honor that need to stand for the flow to come to you. The way you treat all of these people, the law is looking. It's very important. It's, discernment is very important in honor. Some of us will even, because the, uh, for God to bless you, he has to send a man or a woman in your life. Mm. And you may not discern that this one is sent to help you. Is why you need discernment. Some of us will fight the helpers. The law will send you somewhere and you start fighting the person. But the person is there to help you. This is why you need discernment. We need this and we have to ask God, please send us discernment. I remember one story and that touched me. I, I was... Um, in the ministry with this young man who was a pastor. He became a pastor after. He prayed for a lady and the lady, because she was healed from cancer completely and she entered ministry and they were about to make her a pastor. She said, no, even the person who prayed for me to be healed is not yet a pastor. So she invited this young man and he's the way he became pastor. Hmm. But now what happened, discernment, the lady would train him in deliverance and everything. She usually come from Congo several times. She would come and everything. And the Lord told me, he need to honor this woman. He need, she taught him everything on deliverance. She was staying because she said, you have the calling, you have the calling. But he was missing it every time. Mm -hmm. The woman would come. I said, we need to honor this woman a special way. He said, how? She had to, to pray for me because what happened with Ono, it has to be above your own selfishness. Mm -hmm. If you see that everything has to be for you and you give nothing to others, mm -hmm. something is wrong with you mm -hmm. because you carry Christ. Christ is about love. It's about giving. But if it's me, 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 and you enter and you say, I am a Christian. I think you choose the wrong house. Mm. I usually tell people, if you come to church just for money, you don't need to be a Christian. Uh, Saudi Arabia and all of this country, they are not Christian, they are after money. Join the, the race. The Lord will bless you, but seek first the kingdom. That is the condition. If you don't have the kingdom in you, you cannot be running after the blessing and want God to bless you more and more and more. And mm -hmm. you disregard the way of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. The way of the kingdom is love. And mm -hmm. in love, that means what? Mm -hmm. You need sometimes to forget about yourself, mm -hmm. but to give to others first. Mm -hmm. I'm coming back to my story. He missed it. Mm -hmm. He could have honored the woman who has trained him but he completely always miss it. And I was like, God, what is it? He said, you need to understand, never forget the people who help you. Never forget the people who help you. And I keep telling people the same thing, never. Don't look and say, oh, now I have more anointing than the person anyway. No, it doesn't work like that. We are all children of the same father. All children of the same father. So wisdom is number two. You need wisdom. You need wisdom in order to honor. If you lack like discernment, you may as well lack like wisdom. The good news is you can ask God to add wisdom to you. You know, in the even in the book of Proverbs, mm -hmm. 
wisdom is crying, even in different books. Just as for wisdom, you have wisdom. It's the very simple prayer. Father, give me wisdom. He will give you wisdom. Number three is what? It's a word I learned not a long time ago. It's forbearance. Many people have unrealistic expectation when they come to men of God. Even sometimes to their spouse or the people that they respect. You expect the men of God to always be there for you and to live an exceptional life of devotion. Am I lying, Ruti? No. <laughs> no. But you allow yourself to take time off <laughs> from <laughs> church. Some people yeah. allow the, themselves, okay, I will not be there for two weeks. Don't look for me. And then they come back. But they expect the men of God all of this time to stay there. Am I lying? Yeah. You think God doesn't like the man of God is why he put him in charge. It's just a question. You have yeah. season to misbehave and season you come back to your sense. Mm -hmm. We need forbearance. Mm -hmm. What is forbearance? Let's go to Tezerus. People of my Oswald. Mama Onita is not here. She likes English. <laughs> Tezoros <laughs> tell us, patience, forbearance is what? It's patience. Mm -hmm. It's self-control. Mm -hmm. It's restraint. Mm -hmm. It's tolerance. It's mercy, leniency. Everything is in that word. Everything is in that word. Patience. Amen. Self-control, restraint, mm -hmm. tolerance, and mm -hmm. mercy. Let's take this like in marriage, where spouse should honor each other in order to receive their reward. In marriage, you need patience, you need self-control, you need restraint, and restraint that means what? You have a right, but you decide not to apply that right. Mm. I am right, but I decide that no, just for this time, I accept you are right. Take it. Tolerance and mercy. We need that. Mm -hmm. And that one we need also in men of God. Most of the time, the men of God, they will be working hard and hard and hard. Wait until they find one fault on them. Mm -hmm. That's it, we have condemned them. We close the thing as it finish. You forget that this one is the one who support you two years. He's the one who support you three years. He support you. You were single. He pray for you. You got married. He pray for you. You got the first child. He pray for the first child to go to college. Let him have a small weakness. You say this one is the devil. You close his book. That's it. Forbearance. For. Parents. Parents. Amen. Amen. We don't understand that. We don't give honor to people who are perfect. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Say that again. Say that again. There's no one who's perfect. So when you give honor, even if you know the weakness of the person, you are giving honor to someone you need to give honor. Same thing for spouse. It's not the perfect. She's not the perfect. But you give honor because the person and you are one. There's one thing the Lord told me. He said, if I hear you one day say that your husband is crazy, that means you, you are more crazy than your husband. <laughs> because the two make one. Mm. So whatever you insult your spouse, you are insulting yourself. Mm. You better look and give honor to that man, or you better look and give honor to that woman because she's you, mm -hmm. or he's you. Mm -hmm. Don't expect a man of God, oh, no. a woman of God, to be perfect. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Before honoring them. 
Don't uh, expect a parent to be perfect. There's parents in the middle of nowhere that disappear from your life. They appear 20 years after. But guess what? If you became Christian, who should honor the person? It's you. Tomorrow is Mother's Day. A lot of people will be crying because they don't want to call the mother as well. But guess what? The Bible says, oh no. Oh no. Because your turn is coming. Where the child will say, I don't even know if I want to talk to my mom. Life. Oh. Amen. Let me go next. Amen. Okay. Let's continue. There's one revelation I got from the teaching of Joshua Selman on honor. He said, we have all Christian. We have the four faces. You know, you remember, Ruth, you can read Revelation 4, 7. Revelation 4, 7. Amen. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Amen. Amen. And he explained that all of us have the four faces. And this will help you understand this teaching. Each one of these four creatures are in us. We are all, because we do a lot of warfare, we are all lion. We always call on the lion of the tribe of Judah. You roll warfare. And eh, Ruti, you roll warfare. When the enemy try, you show Amen. him who you are. Amen. Because this is who you are. But guess what? You cannot do that your whole life. You cannot be roaring your whole life or you end up hurting people. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that is only part of you. Mm -hmm. The other part of you is a calf. What is a calf? Calf, calves are used for plowing and all of these. They are like servant. That is your servant side. In your servant side, you let people use you. You will do things for people people. You will serve people. You allow people to use you. Uh, Ruti, I don't know, don't pillow we call. I don't know how to, and I know you're in Ireland, I forget, but let's say you're in England. Mm -hmm. And she said, I need a babysitter. I need to go. I need to go. This job is a new position. I need to go for two days. Can you come? You go, you carry baby, diapers, and all of this. That is your calf side. Mm -hmm. Amen. You need to serve. Let people use you for the need. Okay? Amen. Not what you want, but what they need you for. You will let people walk you out by serving them. Now the third face is what? The man face. Because you are a human being and have feelings. Mm -hmm. You are also there. You have feelings and everything. You are a Christian and you have feelings. Don't think that because you are a Christian, you cannot cry. Because you are a Christian, you cannot know. All of those are part of us. It's normal to disagree also. It's normal to say no. Mm -hmm. It's normal. Mm -hmm. Because you are a human being. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the last one is what? The ego. That is the divine that is inside us. That is where all of the gifts come, revelation, prophecy, and everything. So all four are inside you. All four are inside you. So when we react anyway, how? You have to understand that even if we don't know the person, the person cannot be perfect because it's a human being. Even if his Mama Paulette is a prayer warrior, Mama Paulette is still, or Reverend Paulette is still a human being. So sometimes she can do something that is not right. Mm -hmm. But honor has to come. And forbearance, why we need forbearance? Mm -hmm. Forbearance is different from forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness, you did something wrong, I forgive you. But forbearance means I'll forgive you today, I'll forgive you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I forgive you in the future. That is forbearance. So it's more than forgiveness. You look at the person and you say, I accept you the way you are. I accept you and I will love you. 
So how do you celebrate? I start with the man of God in this teaching. Then in the next, if God allow me, I will do families and all of this because we need to know how do you celebrate a man of God? First, you must have deep respect for the man of God mm -hmm. from the heart. Celebrate him openly and sincerely. Openly. Because you can say, I celebrate him in my heart, and you never say to someone, I appreciate you. No. Mm -hmm. I usually tell the person, when you love someone, open your mouth and say, I love you. It's not bad. Celebrate him openly and sincerely. Some people have respect of the office of the person, mm -hmm. but no respect to the, of the person. Mm -hmm. So I can have respect for the title of Reverend that Paul, uh, Reverend Paulette is carrying. Mm -hmm. I have respect for the title, but Reverend Paulette herself, I have no respect of her. Mm -hmm. She has no value. She's just a woman of God. Mm -hmm. But I respect that title. Mm -hmm. I don't respect her. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. You remember what happened to Miriam and the brother Aaron? When they just opened their mouth to talk, it's God himself who answered. That one gave me, it touched me when I read that part. The Lord said for some of my chosen, I am the one who answer. Mm -hmm. They don't have to react. So we have to be careful when we are in the house of God. Two, you must contribute into, uh, in, uh, to improve their life. You must contribute to improve their life. Service is a powerful way of honoring. Mm -hmm. Service is a powerful way of honoring. Mm -hmm. You have to be part of their story. It's very important for Christians to learn. Why? Because Christians now, they are going from church to church, mm -hmm. just like I'm going to Burger King tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to McDonald's. I think there's a new one who's called KFC or things like that. Mm -hmm. So they are testing food here. They are testing food there. They don't care anymore about the environment. Mm -hmm. It's like a market. Church is a market, it's a business place now where I can go and I buy from this prophet, then I go and buy from the other prophet. You have to be careful. In service, that means you need to choose a place where you sit down and you see how you can serve. You need to sit down somewhere and serve. You need to be part of a story of a church. Where are you building? Because the church is like stone, different stone put together. Jesus is a cornerstone. Where are you building? Mm -hmm. And let people remember you by your service. Remember what we read in 1 Kings 12, 7. If you will be a servant to these people, be considerate of their need and respond with compassion. Work things out with them. Then we end up doing anything for you. Every time you honor a man of God mm -hmm. and you serve the man of God, he end up doing everything for you. Mm -hmm. You have people who serve you. When they have a problem, you cannot sleep. It's like you have a problem. Amen. This is a sec the secret of service. Service open a lot of doors. Price stop, we stop your blessing. Learn to serve each other, I will say. Learn to serve others and learn to honor them. Find their need and serve them in their needs. Amen. I remember I have a man, that young man who was uh, my, my pastor, he didn't have to say, I have this problem. When I come around, I will just look and stay quiet. Several times I went to buy, I have a van. You know, when you have a lot of children, the first car you have is always a van. <laughs> I will fill the van from the top to the end. 
with groceries. You cannot see the place in the van. I did it like two or three times. I come, I fill his whole fridge. I fill the order. Why? God. He will never know when I'm doing that. He will just see me. And I ask the, God, the, the wife, can I pack? Can I, can I do this? Can I? He didn't know why. The Lord, the spirit of God. Amen. The spirit of the Lord. You find the need. Huh, the Holy Spirit can tell you this is a problem here. This is a problem here. Do like that for them. Do like that for them. Who's rewarding me? The Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Three, pray for them. How many of you are praying for the leadership of the church? Do you know how many church closed during Corona? How many? <laughs> oh Lord, it was the highest attack and it's still the highest attack on church. This COVID thing. Attacks on leadership, attacks on every level. You have to learn how to pray for the people you value. Learn how to pray for them. The enemy, you think you will be sleepy? When I was teaching on water speed, do you know how many attacks people receive? In leadership and in all over? You need to pray. Because it's easy that you will open the magazine and they are telling you about the pastor who did this, who did that, who did that. And all of us will read Christian also and say, wow, church now we need to be careful. But we'll pray for those people. Nobody say. Nobody say we'll pray for them. But sometimes we have received from them. We have received from them. That is part of honor. To honor a man of God, I just took men of God here. Give respect, contribute to their life. Pray for them. Okay, let me go next. And then I open the floor for question. The full reward. What is the full reward? This is a beautiful story. So Ruti, you start reading Matthew 8, 5 to 6. Remember, we learn about partial reward. We learn about no reward. Now let's talk about full reward. Go ahead. As Jesus entered the village of Capernaum, a Roman captain came up in a panic and said, Master, my servant is sick. He can't walk. He's in terrible pain. Amen. Continue. Jesus said, I'll come and heal him. Oh no, said the captain. I don't want to put you to all that trouble. Just give the order and my servant will be fine. I'm a man who takes orders and gives orders. I'll tell one soldier, go, and he goes. To another, come, and he comes. To my slave, do this, and he does it. Jesus, taken aback, said, I've yet to come across this kind of simple trust in Israel. The very people who are supposed to know all about God and how he works. This man is the vanguard of many outsiders who will soon be coming from all directions, streaming in from the east, pouring in from the west, sitting down at God's kingdom banquet alongside Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then those who grew up in the faith but had no faith will find themselves out in the cold, outsiders to grace and wondering what happened. Then Jesus turned to the captain and said, Go. What you believed could happen has happened. At that moment, his servant became well. Amen. Amen. Look how it works. The Roman captain was part of the empire that was over Israel. Remember, he humbled himself and he received full reward. He was, do you know, a captain on that time has like 6,000 people under him. But he submitted to the authority of Christ. He came, he said, no, you don't have to bother yourself. Say a word only. And when I studied this word before, I saw that he has revelation of the authority. Because in the authority of Christ, there's no distance. 
you can say a word where you are and you apply in India. He yeah. apply in Africa. Amen. He knew what was spiritual authority. He learned from his position what it is to give honor. Because when you are a captain, you are honoring your country. You know what is it to be under authority. You know how to honor your country. It's the same thing he applied now to Jesus. Amen. And because he said that, Jesus said what? He said, look. This man is a vanguard of many outsiders who will soon be coming from all directions. That is prophecy at the same time. Streaming in from the east, pouring in from west, sitting down at God's kingdom banquet alongside with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These are the people who are not originally from Israel, but now come and sit with Abraham. Mm -hmm. We have in this room South African, we have uh, Zambian, we have Africans. We come and we sit now with Abraham and Isaac mm -hmm. because we learn how to honor the Lord, how to revere the Lord, how to worship the Lord. You see the position you are getting when you are honoring, when you know who is in front of you and you refer the person. He's prophesying and he say, then those who grew up in the faith, all of you will say, oh, I'm the son of this, I'm the son, mm -hmm. I'm this from this tribe, I'm a Benjamite, I'm this one. But had no faith, we find themselves out in the cold, outsider to grace and wondering what happened. Honor gives you a position. The captain, I have authority because I'm under authority. He's mm -hmm. under authority, he has authority. Now, when you submit that, you come uh, under the authority that you're submitting. The Bible is telling us to honor a spouse. I will get into that one because it's very serious. We are remarrying people. We are marrying people, left and right, creating family. You need to understand what is to honor. If not, you come back fighting and now we'll be marriage counseling, marriage counseling, left and right and everything, just because you don't know how to honor. This is the problem. You need to know how to honor your spouse. You need to know how to speak. Amen to your spouse, how to maintain your spouse, how to maintain his love for you. It's very important. Mm -hmm. You need to honor your parents. If you have a bad relationship with your father or your mother, it will be difficult for you to have it at church. Mm -hmm. you will be, it will be very mm -hmm. difficult. If it's with the father, it will be difficult for you to have a good relationship with God because he's a father. Mm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have that problem. Men of God, you need to honor. People around you, you need to honor. You need to honor them. People God sent in your life, you need to honor. Amen. Let's start with honoring the parents. That is number one. And I think it's Ivy who asked the question. Honoring the parents. So Grace, help me read if you don't have too much noise on your background. Yes, amen. Ephesians 6, 2 to 3. Ephesians 6, 2 to 3. Mm -hmm. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment. No, that's not, is it? Yeah. And it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Amen. Okay. Yes. The Bible say, which is the first commandment with promise. Ah. With promise. It's the first commandment. So honoring your father and mother is not an advice. It's a commandment with a promise. And this is the promise attached to it is a twofold promise. The first one is 
he will go well with you. What is well with you? Well with you, that means you will experience success in life. You will experience, you will get peace along. You will have joy. You will have love. You will have good health. You will enjoy a rewarding life. So you honor your parent and you will have all of this. So you know when you want to see the impact or the strength or the, the power of a word, put it in the contrary. Do not honor or dishonor your father and mother. This is the first commandment. And it will not be well with you. It will not be well with you. That means if you don't honor your parent, you may end up sick. You may end up without joy, without love. So when we find ourselves in this condition, ask yourself, did I honor my parent? Amen. If they are dead, you can say, okay, I didn't have a good relationship, but now they are dead and everything, of course. But God has given you a spiritual parent too. Do you honor them? It's very important because everything you do, God see, and it has, it goes according to what the Bible say. You will enjoy a rewarding life. First fold is it will be well with you. Second fold is what? You will live a long life on the earth. A long life on the earth. Some people honoring the parent is not sending them a Western Union. That is not honoring the parent. No, it's a condition of the heart. What is your heart condition toward your parent? Honor start in the heart. You are promised not to die prematurely at some fatal uh, disease, car wreck or of unforeseen accident if you honor your parent. Amen. Amen. So God say you will have a good and long life if you honor your parent. As you read this word, the Holy Spirit is planting this truth in your heart. And you will begin to speak accordingly. Don't base your faith in God upon others people experience. You will say, Reverend P, excuse me, I've seen these people. Uh, they, they did that, that, they did like that, but their parents did this to them and everything, and you start your story. That is other people's experience. We are talking to you as a child of God. This is what the Bible say. Based on what the Bible say, you need to take a position. Don't bring someone's history in your thing. Don't bring someone else's story. Look at the verse and apply it to yourself. Did you honor your parent? Are you honoring your parent if they are still alive? It's very important. This promise is rooted deeply in my heart and God is watching over his word to perform it. It has to be in your heart because the way you take care of them, guess what? You are coming to get to an age where they your own. Children we consider like this is your parent. And sometimes I'm telling you, whatever you did to your parent, the children can end up doing the same for you. Mm. So you have to be careful. In the mind of some, I could hear, and if your parent is not part of your life, because some people, they don't know their parent. Mm. Their parent came and disappeared, or they have a problem with their parent. So no communication, they break with a parent a long time ago. I say to people, you are the light in darkness. If you look like darkness, there's no way to do the difference. You have to be the light in darkness. So you have to be that light. You have to arise, shine, and don't get in your parent conflict if they have a family for it or whatever they have. Don't get into that. 
because you may end up confusing your role. You are not a parent, you are a child. Consider yourself as a child and do your role by honoring them. Amen. Honor of parent is not a suggestion or a recommendation. It is a commandment. Has some forgotten we are to keep the commandment of God as New Testament believers? It is evidence the love of God truly abiding us. This is the proof you have the love of God. He who has my commandment and keep them, it is he who loves me. That is John 14, 21. Are you keeping the commandment of God? Do you honor your parent? John the apostle confirmed by writing, this is love that we walk according to his commandment. Second John 6. Let again recap. What is honor? Honor is to value, to esteem, to respect, to treat favorably, to have high regard for. Do you look at your parent with high regard? Or you look at your parent down like, look at you. Now you pray, you are like a saint. But remember what you was doing in your past. That is punishing the parent for his past. It's wrong. Yeah. It is wrong. Do you value your parents? Do you esteem them? Do you respect them? Or you treat them like, now? Nah, OK. They get to an age, they don't know what they want anymore. They are too old. And you just treat them like children. In viewing our parent through the eyes of honor, we will communicate with them in respect and love. Mm -hmm. Honor means respect and love. I continue to the next. And you can write down the question if you have question. Okay. Honoring the parents, I continue. Recall honor can be displayed. How you display honor? We did that on the first, on the first part. Indeed, in word, even in thought, the way you are thinking about someone. If you think about someone like, oh, she's just this, she just want this, she's so wicked, she's so, you are not honoring because the way you think about the person disqualify everything you can do. Mm. All true honor originate from the heart. So if young people, young men and women speak in a careless way, irreverent way, on a regular basis to their parent. Your, your parents say, go and do this. Mm. Go and do it yourself. Shut the light. I'm, I'm watching my TV. I'm doing my homework first. Be careful. They are displaying outwardly the lack of true honor for the parent. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is speaking. Dishonor. The dishonor also can be displayed by the behavior, such as the tone of the voice. Mm. You speak to a child, suddenly he raises his voice and speak louder than you. Or rolling the eyes can be an attitude. Rolling the eyes, disgusted look, dragging their feet and making noise out of a request, complaining and so forth. All of these are display of dishonor. Dishonoring of parents has become a normal way of America. America has a serious problem with discipline. Mm -hmm. It is in our culture. There are a number of popular family movies and you watch and Disney and Nicolette, I can call them because I sat with my children. The sad story is they make children heroes and they make parents dumb in their scenarios. Mm. The story can be touching, but they end up treating the parent, the father or mother as stupid and out of touch. The disregard in the movie, the parent directive, the movie concludes with the children becoming heroes or they will get their heart desire even though they treated the parent with contempt. Dangerous. 
You may think I've gone too far, but hear what God say. That is written in the Bible. People don't know that. Curse is he who dis no, dishonor his father or his mother. And all the people say, amen. amen. Wow. When you dishonor your parents, you are cursed. People don't know that. People don't know that. So this generation, you see how many people are walking on the, on the, and this is curse is not coming from, from the devil. It's coming from God. So we have to be careful in the way we just no, no. It's not only the way our children are speaking to us, but it's the way we ourselves spoke to our, our parents. Do you understand how strong the word curse is? Mm. To be cursed by God is a very serious issue. We may expect to hear most of the time, curse is who will murder. Mm. And you say, yeah, it can be cursed. Who steal, it can be cursed. Practice sexual immorality, it can be cursed. Or witchcraft, it can be cursed. Yet God said the one who dishonor his father or mother is cursed it's very important i don't play with that when you come with any complaint and you are not walking right with towards your parent you have a problem mm -hmm. you have a problem so let's go to the next we will do each case okay mm -hmm. honoring the parent this is the first now let's see in regard to children what parents need to do. Children are rewards. That is the way the Bible put it. Children are a good thing. Parents dishonor their children, how? Huh? Not only by harsh and negative words. When you speak to your child every time you're angry and you are insulting your child, you are cursing your child. You are destroying the reward you can have to that child. Because God is the one giving you reward. Let's study further. By neglecting to communicate praise, the child will do good things. He will go and do this and do that, or work very well at school, be in the best, but you don't put, say that in your mouth. Oh, you are so wonderful. You did a great job. You get, you reserve it, you withhold the honor you should give to the child is wrong. Mm. It's wrong. You withhold acceptance at the appropriate time. There's a time where you need to love that child just for who he is. And you tell him, great job. You tap like that. You did a great job. You are wonderful. Children require frequent encouragement, direction, and affirmation. They need to be told as well shown that they are love and value. They are love and value. If not chance are good, they will seek it in the wrong places. Why the child come and start going out with someone else who has no sense, no family value and everything? Because that person listened to him. Mm. You, you are in the house, you don't listen. He tried to get your attention several ways. Mm -mm. You are focused on something else. And that thing is more valuable to you than that child that is standing in front of you. So son and daughters seek approval. My door is always open. I tell you why I cannot close that door. The number of times these children knock at the door to ask me something that is so simple. But it's just because they need approval. Mm. Mommy, can I go and get the letter? Of course you can go. It's beautiful. It's daytime. You have the key. Go and get the letter. But they need me to say, yes, son. Thank you for doing it. Mm. They need approval. Mm. But if parents focus on immature traits, you are always looking what the child is doing wrong. Immature flows. They send the wrong message and reap the very opposite of what is needed for the children to grow mature. 
because you always look at what is wrong. Always. Major damage can result when just a few words of affirmation who have made the adjustment and the hurt will have been prevented. Words of a father or a mother weigh so heavily in the life of a son and daughter. They weigh heavily. I tell you what we need to fight. We have been in culture where we don't encourage children, in culture where the only communication is spanking or seeing what is wrong. Yeah. And without knowing, we come to a culture that ad adore the children or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we try to say, no, African way, we have African way. So we try to repeat what was done to us. It is wrong. Mm -hmm. When defeat, failure, or weakness is spoken, the fallout in the child life can range from a hindrance all the way to serious issue. Do you know that when a child starts failing, if you are not careful, he will add up, he will go growing more in the, he will go worse. Often parents become increasingly zingly discouraged with their child behavior because it's appeared to be deteriorating and a vicious cycle begins. If care is not taken, this reactive treatment will distance the parent from the reward God bestow through our children. There's a reward to raise children. There's a reward to have children. There's a reward also to raise children well. Mm. Amen. Amen. So Psalm 127, 3 say, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. There is a reward there. Don't look at it and say, okay, I've done my duty. Now you can go and grow. I'm tired of this. No. Some people will even say, if I can lock that child in a, 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 at this age, since it's disturbing me, and pick him up like 10 years after. No. Psalm 127.3, we see in this scripture a direct reference of the reward promised through all children. Why don't more parents reveal, I mean, wait for this promise of the parent-child relationship? Parent-child relationship give a reward. Parent-child. However, when parents speak the promise of God over the children, this kid eventually grew into what was spoken. What was spoken into the child is what we come forth. In light of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, this makes perfect sense. Look at that. Can you read it? Yes. Um, while it starts, why we do not look at the things. Oh, okay. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. Second Corinthians 4 18. Amen. Amen. You see that God is showing you that you can see something, but it's temporary. But what is coming is what he's looking for. So sometimes we see a child, you say, ah, this one, I don't even know how to start. But God can show you what is in the future of that child. And he tell you, hold on. Hold on to what God has for this child. Hold on to the promise. And if you hold on, he can change the child. So the promise of his unchanging word, we should be of focus. Can you read also Amplify Isaiah 54, 13? Yes, Isaiah 54, 13, Amplified Bible. And all your spiritual children shall be disciples taught by the Lord and obedient to his will. And great shall be the peace and undisturbed composure of your children. Amen. Amen. Now, just think, if your natural children are also your spiritual children, can you imagine your reward? Because sometimes when we see that, we say, okay, okay, I will focus on the spiritual side because anyway, 
is the spiritual side that is more important in the eyes of God is wrong. The natural side are the one that was given to you naturally. God didn't make an error to let that children be born in your house. So all your spiritual children count the natural one who becomes spiritual shall be disciple. That means what? When you see a child in front of you, even though it has the wrong behavior, you have to speak the word that you want to see accomplished in his life. So don't look at the child and you say, you're so stupid. No, look at the child and you say, this is my professor. This is my doctor. This is my engineer. This is this, this is that. Give a title that could start attaching to the personality of that child. And because you spoke it so often, you can see it happen. Taught by the Lord and obedient to his will. Teach him the word. Great shall be the peace and undisturbed composure of your children. The composure is made by everything you have put in the, in the child, everything. Put it inside him. You are loved. You are blessed. The grace of God is on you. You will be this. You are. Talk to the child in the positive way. Psalm 127, 4. Can you go ahead, Grace? Yes. And that they were our arrows born for signs and wonders. Amen. They are born for signs and wonders. Look at your children. And you say, you are born for signs and wonders. So I'm, I'm not expecting anything different, but signs and wonders. No matter the time is taken, you speak it. You speak it. Now, in this one, I didn't say, don't discipline your child. You know, we, we did several things where they say, you have to, actually, the Jewish have even spanking in their vocabulary when they are speaking. Because they say it casts out foolishness. Discipline has to stand there. But the discipline is not a way to disregard the love you can speak in word in the life of the child. Mm. The word you are speaking in order for the child to grow in the image of God. The word you can be speaking in his life. Amen. 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 So let go. I know it's, this teaching is as tough, but we will try. Spouse call to honor. I will speak husband. I will speak wife. And I will complete this because it's very important. The wife call to honor in, reg in regard to the wife role. Can you read Ephesians 5, 33? Yes. Let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband, that she notices him, regards him, honors him, prefers him, venerates him, and esteems him, and that she defers to him, praises him, and loves and admires him exceedingly. Wow. Only this, if you frame it in your house, or you do in a meeting and you put it there, women will be fighting you. But this is true. This is what God is expecting. The wife see that she respect and reverence her husband. In the respect is what? Notice him. Someone just took a picture. In the respect is what? Regard him. When they say regard, I mean highly. In the respect is what? Honor him. Prefer him. Venerate. They use that word. Esteem him. That she defer to him. Praise him. Love and admire him exceedingly. You see that word? They mm -hmm. add it just for you to show how high your esteem has to be. Wow. That is a mouthful. That is a mouthful. You can see Paul spelling all of this out because it's the place you are giving. And remember that when the God did the hierarchy, 
He put God first, Jesus first. He put men. He put the wife and then the children. So the way the wife look at the husband is the same way the husband need to look also at Jesus. Mm -hmm. But you will see that in this call to honor, both of them has to do the same job. Let's continue. The husband is the head of the home. You will see that it's not an idea of men to always say, I'm the man, I am the man, no. It is God's idea to put the husband as the head. It is impossible to have true peace in a house and blessing in a home where the husband is not respected as the head. When you enter any house where the man is not respected as the head, you can feel it. I've been uh, witnessing when I was young in one of my uncle's house, his, his wife was controlling the whole house. Even her tantrum, when she threw a tantrum, she break every plate in the kitchen and everything. The whole house lived in fear of the woman. And the husband will be just there smiling and he's smiling. You will know from the beginning that this one, there's something wrong in the house. Nobody wants to go there in vacation when they say, but they have money. He was the, the most rich person in the family. Nobody wants to go there. Because if the woman get mad with you, Grace, you don't know where you will end. I remember just one thing one day. We were in the car and I was still young. I was like nine years old and everything. And we went to them and they took us in vacation. I was uh, drink, um, you, you know, orange, orange back home, natural orange. Mm -hmm. They have a seed. Mm -hmm. I was eating seed and I was removing, uh, eating the, uh, my orange pressing and I was removing the seed. And I asked her if I can put it in a tissue or put it somewhere or trash it by the window. The way she looked at me and what she told me, she told me to swallow the seed. Like, like you hear, that nobody will open her window. When I swallow the seed, Grace, then she look at me, laugh at me in my face. Something was wrong with her spiritual. And she said, a tree will grow from my belly. Grace, I didn't, I, I didn't sleep the whole night. Oh my God. I was just nine years old. I think I was between seven and nine. I couldn't, you understand? I was traumatized that a tree would, would grow from my belly. And she was laughing. But this is just an example mm. of how the behavior of someone can change the whole environment. It's just her, OK? Oh. Mm -hmm. So on the contrary, let's continue. On the contrary, when a woman of God values her husband as the leader of the home, she will receive the reward of honor. I kind of touched this the last teaching. Mm -hmm. It may come directly to him, but sometimes it can come by other avenue. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the reward of the woman is not coming through the husband. Sometimes it comes from other avenue. The law will make sure that he rewards the woman who respect her husband. He will make sure of that. The apostle Paul writes, in the same way as Paul. Can you read it? You married women, be submissive to your own husbands, mm -hmm. subordinate yourselves as being secondary to and dependent on them and adapt yourselves to them so that even if any do not obey the word of God, they may be won over, not by discussion, but by the godly lives of their wives when they observe the pure and modest way in which you conduct yourselves. Mm -hmm. Together with your reverence for your husband, you are to feel for him all... Oh, wait. Is that... Okay. You are to... Okay, you are to feel for him all that reverence includes, to respect, defer to, revere him, to honor, esteem, appreciate prize and in the human sense to adore him that is to admire 
praise, be devoted to, deeply love and enjoy your husband. Amen. Amen. That is First Peter 3, 1 to 2, Amplify. Let me tell you, when I read this or when I, I, I was studying this the first time, I was angry with God. I said, God, you cannot put all of this because you know sometimes men are doing things that are wrong, very wrong. Mm -hmm. Why you can put all of this? That means that mm, marriage is a scam. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It was the way I was thinking before. I tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit showed me where we are, we are wrong. He told me, when you are respecting the man, respect, defer, revere him, honor, esteem, appreciate, prize in the human sense, adore him, admire him, praise him, devoted, deeply love, enjoy your husband. He said, look inside your husband. Can you see me? Wow. I say, yes. He said, now can you do it? I say, of course. If you see Jesus through your husband, you will do it for the sake of God. Amen. You will do it for the sake of God. And the Lord that you are respecting, you are adoring, you are appreciating, you are admiring, and everything, honoring, esteeming, he will give it back to you. He will give it back to you. Peter showed that even if the wife husband is not saved, it is her honoring behavior that will reach him and not her preaching or teaching. I know men who have been won over the Lord by this very conduct of their wife. A great example is Smith Wigglewolf, one of the greatest men of God in Europe in the early 19th. Grace, I will ask you, please, to help me read this story. That is the story of Wigglewolf. He starts here and he ends up in the order, but this is the great story to learn that will help you see how your patience can bring out a great man of God. So go ahead, please. Okay, so a great man of god okay so he didn't want so i'll start, start with, here at wigglesworth at wigglesworth a great example is smith wigglesworth one of the greatest men of god in europe in the early 1900s wigglesworth was a plumber and had over time grown very cold towards god he didn't want anything to do with christianity polly his wife on the other hand was a very devout believer. In fact, her zeal for God was increasing all the while. Her devotion made Wigglesworth's laxity more and more apparent, and he became irritated by her presence. The wife, okay, he harshly persecuted her for her faith and in no uncertain terms told her not to go to church. She didn't adhere to his command, for it was contrary to the will of God. Again, as stated earlier, we, we are to obey authority as long as they do not tell us to violate the written word of God. So she would make his dinner and leave for Sunday evening church. One night she came home from church later than usual. Upon entering the house, Smith demanded, I am the master of this house, and I'm not going to have you coming home at so late an hour as this. Polly quietly replied, I know that you are my husband, but Christ is my master. Greatly annoyed and enraged, Wigglesworth opened the back door and forced her out of the house, locking the door behind her. Upon waking in the morning, Smith opened the door to get the newspaper. When he did not, when he did, she fell into the house. She immediately got up and happily said, Smith, what would you like for breakfast? Then she proceeded to make his morning breakfast. As it turned out, Polly's determination to obey God and honor her husband had a profound effect on Wigglesworth. 
He eventually came under great conviction and surrendered completely to the service of Jesus Christ. And his work is still respected and talked about to this day. Amen. Amen. Continue. Oh, okay. Many were saved, healed, and even raised from the dead through his ministry. Polly's reward at the judgment seat of Christ will be enormous because of all the hundreds of thousands of people who have been impacted by his ministry. She received not only the reward of a changed husband, but also a great harvest in the life to come. Amen. Amen. So we are instructed to honor, not just for the sake of those we honor, but for the sake of the kingdom as us as well. We personally lose if we withhold honor from whom honor is due. Amen. That is a key message. When I read the story of that woman, and some put the version, because you have to take the version from his book, she slept outside and it was cold. It was a winter time. And they didn't say that the, the man was drinking. He has a drinking problem. Wow. He kicked her out. He was drunk. He couldn't remember it was winter. So when he opened in the morning, she entered. She did breakfast for him. Sometimes he will hide all of her shoes and she has very small size of shoes. He will hide all of them. You know what she will do? She go behind the house and she will find the, 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 the rain boot, boot of his um, husband, of her husband. She will wear it and he wear like size or 12 or 13. She will wear those boots and go to preach. Their story is something. But that man, when he gave his life to Christ, his shadow healed people. Oh. His shadow healed people. So you never know in this process of honoring the person who will come out of it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Let's continue. It's powerful. We are trying. Amen. And I Amen. think... This is the last slide, but I need to finish because I need to say how men need to honor more the wife also. This one is one part. Why men honor? First Peter 3, 7. Go ahead. Peter specifically states that wives are to be given honors. No, on top, sorry. Oh, likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife, as to the weaker vessel. Amen. Amen. He's telling them, Peter is telling them, give them honor as to the weaker vessel. He said, dwell with them with understanding. You have to understand your wife. Amen. You have to give her honor, but also understand her. It's very important as to the weaker vessel. Peter specifically stated that wives are to be given honor. Some men interpret this verse to mean that the wife is beneath her husband in spiritual things because it says weaker vessel. They say, okay, she's weaker anyway. She doesn't understand that much things of the house. I am the master here. No weaker vessel doesn't mean your wife is below you. No. The physical strength of the average woman is less than the average man, normally, eh? normally. Mm. I've seen story where women beat their husband. It can happen. But normally, the physical strength of the average woman is less than the average man. Mm -hmm. And the Amplified Bible records this verse as honoring the woman as physically weaker. Here, Peter, in the New Living Translation, can you read the same, but New Living Translation, read it for me. Amen. In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat her with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. If you don't treat her as you should, your prayers will not be heard. Is it that simple? 
it is simple. Treat her with understanding. Understanding is the key. Some people try to resume, oh, women are from March or men are from where, or they are, they are telling a story that, no. The Bible says treat her with understanding. You don't understand your wife. Ask God to teach you who is your wife and understand her. Treat her with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, that is physically, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. That is new life in Christ. If you are born again, you need to honor your, life, your wife. She's an equal partner. Some Bible say join her. Mm. Equal partner. If you don't treat her as you should, this is major. Your prayer will not be heard. Very important. We are equal partner. We are joint heads of the inheritance of grace. However, in the final part of this verse, we see a startling and remarkable statement having to do with answer prayer. If a husband dishonor his wife, his prayer will not be heard. It's simple. That is sobering. This is a miserable life for anyone. Is a miserable life for a Christian to pray and your prayer are not heard. Just think about it. The throne room will not listen to your prayers. Your words will not even reach the ears of God if you dishonor your wife. That enough to grab my complete attention for me is, that's it. The good news is that the contrary is also true. If a wife dishonor her husband, her prayer also are not heard. If you honor your wife, you will have confidence in prayer before God. Let me take a moment and speak directly to you, husband. Speaking to husband now, do you treat your wife as valuable? Do you listen to her words or do you shun her? Shun mean you don't care. Or you do like the person does not exist. Anyway, we are there, we just accept and life is like that and we continue. Thinking to yourself, oh, she's just an emotional female. We sometimes learn this lesson the hard way. I tell you something before I finish. When I start doing deliverance, this is one of the first lessons I learned. The Holy Spirit told me, you are dealing with the enemy directly in the camp of the enemy. There's no way you go to war to cast a demon if you yourself, you're a rebel. Mm. Learn to submit. Trust me, I have to learn. Because if anything happened in my room, and I get out of here and I go to church to pray for anyone, I will pray and pray and pray and pray and nothing will happen. And the Holy Spirit will, will be clear with me. He said, they are not going anywhere. anywhere. You yourself, you are like them. You are rebelling. So I have to make sure I submit. And sometimes even he, was, he will be sleeping. I will take his hand, I put on my head. And I start praying, Father, let him bless me. Let him cover me. Let him protect me. In the name of Jesus, he will wake up. His hand is on my head and he will look at me like he say, what is this woman doing with my head? <laughs> you understand? Amen. Because I know when he put his hand on my head, nothing can touch me. Amen. It's very important to understand the spiritual impact your spouse has in your spiritual life. If you don't understand it, <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Your spouse may be carrying the wisdom of God. Some people, my, my husband is not going to church. 
but he know everything that is happening in NBM. Mm. He woke up in the morning, he will tell me, okay, what are you praying for? I said, I'm praying for this one, for this one. He said, okay, for this one, this is what I'm seeing. <laughs> and trust me, whatever he said Amen. happened to be true. If I continue to pray for the person, I will see it happening. So I found that God gave him a gift of discernment in many cases, he will tell me, this is the way you can solve this problem. This is the way you can solve this problem. Why God put me with that man? Then I say, okay, let's go to church on Sunday. He say, I have something to do. He will leave. <laughs> and he has been playing like that for 20 years. When he's sick, he say, hey, come and put your hand here. I put the hand. Pray in your tongues or whatever you pray. Pray on my legs and I will be praying. You, see, you look at all, you will just laugh. You say, these people, what is wrong with them? What is the grace of God? Amen. It's the grace for him to know that God answered prayer. And the prayer of my wife, God answered. Reverend I, I cannot remember how many cases her husband will bring to her. I have a case for you. <laughs> Can you pray for this person, this person, this person? And Reverend will look at him like, <laughs> you have to join me on what you are giving me as work. You understand? Amen. God himself has chosen a spouse and they know what they are doing. They are in support on what they are doing, what we are doing. So you need to understand. You have to join. When you are married, you have to join that person that God gave you and be in agreement to multiply the, the strength of the force against the enemy. One, we cast out 1,000, two, 10,000. It's what we are doing. Do not disregard someone. Does not disregard what he is, is saying or you, she is saying. Do not see yourself as the more spiritual because sometimes it's that you see yourself like so high and the other one, oh no, it take a time. I had the pastor who has the problem. When he start praying, he will take three months, go because they have a three level house, go in the third level. The wife doesn't know, she will just come one day, the guy has disappeared from the house, he's living now in the third level of the house and say that the law has told me that I, I'm going to a next level. So you stay there, I don't want you in my room. I don't want, I don't, and he will cut all relationship with the woman. I look at him and say, what is wrong with you? He said, no, God has told me. So she, she doesn't understand me spiritually. She's not at my level. I said, that is your first role to put her at your level. That is your first role. That is your first student there. That is the first person you need to teach. Why you would drive all the way to teach us at church? When you have a student here, we need to be the first to listen to your lesson. If your spouse is the one that you seem to be, you say you are too high for him, let him get to your level. Amen? I know I went some time, but we need to tell the truth and talk to ourselves. We need to talk to each other. Amen? Amen. Because sometimes I tell you what, church transform people on people adoring the leader of the church or the pastor of the church or the prophet of the church. He become the model for everybody. People don't understand that. No, the model start at home. The model start at home. So we need to see how we are treating each other at home first, before going to church to represent our family in church. We have to represent ourselves and respect each other, honor each other, amen? 